Bitcoin falls $1,000 after South Korea promises crackdown on trading. Now this is going to be a very short video today guys. I just want to update you guys on some news that has come out very recently and it's all about South Korea apparently cracking down on trading. The aim of this video is really to try and cut through the bullshit and tell this how it really is. Because I'm reading a lot of headlines today talking about how South Korea is cracking down on trading or how they're going to ban cryptocurrencies. Some ridiculous talk like this. I just wanted to cut through it all and explain exactly what is really going on. On the surface, this appears to be quite a concerning issue. After all, South Korea is one of the biggest purchasers of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. You come across articles like this, and this is on The Guardian, which is supposed to be a respected publication, and there's virtually no information about what South Korea have actually said. In fact, the only quote that I'm seeing on here is that the government have issued a statement saying, it had warned several times that virtual coins cannot play a role as actual currency and could result in high losses due to excessive volatility. To us, this doesn't really mean much. Which government in the world is really going to say anything different to this? So what's the truth behind the news? Well, in this article here, it clearly states that South Korea will require real name cryptocurrency transactions and impose a ban on the offering of virtual accounts by banks to the crypto exchanges. In other words, South Korea actually cracking down on people using fake names and opening up multiple accounts. They're actually cracking down on Bitcoin or people using cryptocurrencies. They're just cracking down on people who are trying to deceive the system. This is very different to cracking down on cryptocurrencies in general. When you compare this to something like China who have banned cryptocurrency exchanges and ICOs, there's a huge, huge difference between this and what South Korea have done. Now this article also talks about the fact Bitcoin fell as much as 9%. Anyone that's involved in cryptocurrencies really knows that 9% is a relatively small number. And in fact, if we look at this from more of a macro perspective, and we talk about the long-term elements, this could potentially even be a positive sign for Bitcoin. Now, I know this may sound negative at first glance, especially if you read some articles like the Guardian article, it's always going to sound negative. But to us, this sounds like a step towards regulating cryptocurrencies for South Korea. If they wanted to introduce a ban, it would be very easy for them to do so. Instead, they've introduced a very small regulation. So if anything, we'd expect to see more regulations like this come in in the future, which actually legitimizes the whole industry. The next thing to look at very briefly, we're going to head over to Crypto Compare and we're going to look at the amount of Bitcoin being bought from different currencies. So this is actually very useful for you guys. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see the ratio. So you can see, like, for example, the US dollar buys 40% of Bitcoin. Japan's at 33%. So South Korea is denominated by KRW and they're around 5.76%. I haven't actually got the statistics in front of me, so don't quote me on this. I tend to check this page relatively often and they're usually around the 7 to 9% range. So the fact they've fallen to 5.76% really isn't that much of a concern. It shows that potentially the drop in Bitcoin price is more related to investors' fear than it is about a legitimate reason to take your money out. As I said, guys, this is a very short video for us, so we're going to wrap this up very soon. Just want to finish with one final point, which is let's actually spin this negative into a positive. This is the kind of time that as an investor, you want to try and keep money on the sidelines. So when you hear about a dip in cryptocurrencies based on something which shouldn't really cause a dip, you know it's all related to investor fear rather than the fundamentals. This is when that money on the side comes in handy and people can choose to invest more money back into the market in order to lower your average cost of your cryptocurrencies. So let's say you bought all of your Bitcoin at $16,000. When you see the price go down to 13,000, rather than being fearful and selling your Bitcoin, smart investors actually tend to use these opportunities to buy more. So let's say you bought the same amount again at 13,000, suddenly your average cost will have moved from 16,000 per Bitcoin to 14,500. And this basically means that whatever the price of Bitcoin goes to, you're in a better situation because you've lowered your average cost. That's not a recommendation for anyone to do that though, guys. We're not offering financial advice here at all. This is how we like to take advantage of the dips in the market, but we're certainly not recommending it for anyone else. Right, this is the end of this very short video, guys. This is actually the first news video that we've ever done. So let us know if you like it. If you'd rather us just do regular reviews, throw that in the comments too. Just let us know. A bit of feedback's always going to help. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will speak again very soon.